Hi, welcome to our show, Karate and You. I'm your host, Master Art Bynes. <laughs> Before we begin today's program, I'd like to explain a little bit about our show. As you know, Karate and You wasn't designed specifically just to promote United States Black Cat Kempo Karate, but to promote all styles of the martial arts. So may all unite in a common cause to help improve our country, and help make it a happier, healthier, safer place in which to live. Today's show, I have a very special guest. Nice pedicure, by the way. <laughs> A um, lady that you've seen on our show many, many times. She's one of our black belts and assistant instructors at our karate school in Howell Township. This is 17-year-old Miss Jennifer Natoli. Jennifer, you can take a look. Oh, Jennifer, what a nice shot that was. Your big pearly white teeth. <laughs> Jennifer's going to be on our show today, and the reason we have her on is because everybody's going back to school. And you young ladies out there, it's always good to know a little bit of something, because knowing something's better than knowing nothing at all. And we're going to do some basic self-defense techniques for you. So without any further ado, turn on your VCRs, and we'll be right back. Woo! Hi, welcome back to Karate You. Today's show we're going to be covering some basic self-defense striking surfaces for a lot of you ladies out there. Uh, this will also give you an opportunity to understand the mechanics of our self-defense techniques a little better when we show you the striking surface, first of all. But before we begin, I want to make sure that you're very conscientious of the most important self-defense technique of all that happens to be avoidance. What you want to do is you want to avoid a potentially dangerous situation, all right, environment or what have you. That means stay out of places where you shouldn't be. Be conscientious of what's going on. The second self-defense technique would be if someone happened to come up to you and they grabbed you, would be verbal self-defense. This is real, real important. And what Jennifer's going to do here, I'm just going to grab her. She's going to tell me, let me go, let me go, real loud. Let me go, let me go. All right, now, the reason she does this, there's a couple of reasons. The first one is, number one, is everybody is told when they're children not to speak to strangers. As we grow up, we also know that we're not supposed to be talking to children because it's not the proper thing to do. Number two, our body happens to be our, you know, private property. And one of the things we want to make sure of is that no one touches that private property unless we give them proper permission. Now, Jennifer says to me, let me go, let me go. She knows I know I'm not supposed to touch her. If I don't respond to her command, then obviously I have some bad intention. At that point, Jennifer has to use her judgment and her body has to respond to the situation. And with her proper martial arts training, what's going to happen is muscle memory will kick in and she's going to wind up kicking me somewhere. All right. Now, the other reason why we say let me go, let me go is to attract attention. So let's say Jennifer, I grab her, she yells out, let me go, let me go. Let me go, let me go. First thing is I'm not letting her go. The second thing happens to be that she's drawing attention. If there's any people in the immediate area, they hear somebody yelling, let me go, let me go, they usually will come to your aid and hopefully assist you in the situation. The third reason would be, let's say hypothetically, I came up to Jennifer and I grabbed her. She didn't say, let me go, let me go, and I just maybe wanted to tap her on the shoulder and ask her for directions. And Jennifer all of a sudden chopped me up like chop suey. The end result is I had a destroyed knee and my shoulder was out of whack and my neck was in, a, in a, some type of a brace. And we're down at the uh, town hall, standing in front of the judge, and I'm standing there like this, all types of twisted. And the judge looks at her and looks at me and says, what happened? And I say, Your Honor, I asked her what time it was. I came up to her and asked her for directions. She turned around and she laid me out. So it's also going to cover her in a self-defense situation if the situation arises where the individual gets seriously injured and you have to appear in court. So there's a th really like kind of a three-fold type of a thing here. All right, now, first thing we're going to do, we're going to practice doing some basic techniques that will really be advantageous for you and they'll get the message real quick to the adversary as far as letting me go. So the first thing we want to do is we can show you real quickly from here. It doesn't matter how big you are, what size you are, what sex you are. If somebody grabs you, whether they grab you in a handshake, they grab you by the arm, whatever the case may be, what we do from here is Jennifer reaches over and she places her two fingers, her index finger, middle finger on my thumb, and she lays her thumb there flush on top of mine. Now what she's going to do is she's going to rip back into my cuticle. When she rips back into my cuticle, she's not going to do it deliberately, but she's going to inflict a little pain on me. I'm going to smack my leg. That's going to be an indicator to her. Hey, let me go. Go ahead, Jen. Oos. All right. Now, what she's doing here is she's pulling this cuticle right here, right back, and I'm telling you, this sends a message right up my arm saying, oh, my God, did I make a mistake? I tangled with a bobcat here. Again, she's going to rip that cuticle for me. Go. Go, go, go. Yo! Okay, very good. Now, end result is I let go. Even if I had a couple of those Coors lights, you know, I'm telling you the pain is still going to get the message to my brain. The other thing we're going to work on is an elbow smash. And I have a pad here that'll give an indicator as to Jennifer's power and potential here. And what I'd like you to do, Jennifer, I'd like you to hit me with your left elbow just across the body here. And give me a nice loud key out with that. Go ahead. Ah! Yeah. Okay, that was good. When I say do it, you do it. You listen for instructions, that's for sure. 
Okay, hey, you crack my back and everything. I don't have to go to chiropractor after this. Again, very nice. Again, very good. Now, what I want you to take notice on here is pay particular attention to her body mechanics. What she's doing is she's hitting me with her whole body. She just happens to be making contact with the elbow. If you look real close, you see that I probably outweigh Jennifer by maybe about 100 and maybe 50 pounds. Who knows? How much you weigh, Jen? About 110. 110. Okay, I'll weigh her by, let's take it back to 90 pounds. All right, 90 pounds. Now, what she's going to do is she has to incorporate 110 pounds of her body weight into her technique in order to have any chance at all against a guy my size. So what she has to do is she has to incorporate her whole body. What she does is when she makes the contact with the elbow, she's actually hitting with her whole body. So in other words, she gets up on the ball of her foot, turns her hips and shoulders, just twist a little bit for us. See how she's throwing her body momentum going forward? Her, her momentum is all going forward. And the power that she creates here is done by the velocity of the elbow coming from point A to point B, which happens to be an individual's face. Okay? Velocity and speed create power, and we know she's going to be hitting us with that 110 pounds. So that really compensates for the difference in size and strength that I have over her, or a potential attacker for that matter. Now, let's watch it again with Jen. She's throwing an elbow smash with her left elbow, and pay particular close attention to her hip, her ball of her foot, and her shoulder. Hip! hey Oof! Man, I'm telling you, I pitied a fool. Hip! hey Very good. I said no, I'm not going out with you tonight. Is that what you tell him? Hip! hey Okay, very good. Nice work. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work on a roundhouse kick. A roundhouse kick. And we want to keep it relatively low. All right? So I don't want you to mess my hair up. She's going to be doing a roundhouse kick, and a roundhouse kick is a devastating kick. And it's similar to taking a baseball bat and coming around and swinging a baseball bat and hitting a home run. And what I want you to do, Jennifer, if you would, use your rear leg and throw a roundhouse kick right about, I'd say about waist level, my waist, okay? Right here, roundhouse kick. Hip. Osa. Again. Hip. Nice. Hip. Good. Now, again, one of the points to bring out here is that she pivots on the supporting leg here, her forward leg, and her hips are going to turn. She's going to actually turn 180 degrees and beyond. Hit me with her body. Makes contact with her foot. And the striking surface on this particular kick is going to be the shin and the instep of her foot. Ready? Hip. See how she's pivoting there? She's getting her whole body into the technique. Hip. Very nice. Martial arts wasn't designed for someone my size. It was designed for smaller framed individuals. And this is the whole mechanics of the martial arts, is incorporating your entire being into the technique to get maximum potential. Hip. Yes, uh, one more time. Hip. Very good. Stay right there. Let me get a front round kick, if you could, so the people at home can see how it's done with the front leg. Hip. Oos, man. Hip. Oos, uh, very good. Hip. Very nice. One more time for good luck. Hip. Very good. Okay, nice roundhouse kick. Next, we're going to do a stiff upper shin kick. And this is a real nice one, particularly to the groin area. And could you do me a favor? If you remember in the beginning of the show, you saw Jennifer had her leg just about straight up in the air. Uh, what Jennifer's going to do right now is a stiff upper stretch kick without hitting the target. I just want the people at home to see what your capabilities are now. In the martial arts, you always realize that, you know, number one, the extension of your technique, in other words, if her leg can go this high, let me get you in here, about that high, that's not where she wants to make contact. She wants to make contact down here. This becomes what we call the follow-through. So in other words, if I throw a punch at Jennifer's nose, right here, I can't hurt her anymore. It's impossible for me to hit her. So what I have to do is I have to readjust, make contact three quarters of the way out, and then I have another quarter of follow through. So I want you to picture this. She's going to do a stiff upper stretch kick with her left leg. And let's pretend, even if it was the tallest of men, okay, the groin area is about here. She makes contact here. Watch the follow through of her leg. Go ahead. Hip. Oh, man. Headache, et cetera. Hip. Again, so the concept is here. She hits the man in the groin here, or in my case, I'm about here. She hits him, and that leg goes right on up, and you split him just like a Lincoln log. Okay, watch her again. Hip. Very nice. One more time. Hip. Good. Now, this is a stiff upper shin kick, and it goes directly for the groin area. It goes directly for the groin area, and because I'm no fool, I got myself a big pad here. We're going to simulate my groin area right there. And, Jennifer, I want you to give me a couple of shots with that left leg. Hip. Ah. Oosh. Uh, ooh. Hip. Ah. Hi again. Hip. Ah. Hi Remember, she weighs 110 pounds. 110 pounds. And I'm 200 pounds. In order for her to have any chance against me at all, she has to get her whole being into it. When I say being, 
Number one, the whole body mechanics have to be there. She has to have the knowledge of the technique, and she has to be honest with herself enough to know that she has the capability of defending herself, all right? The confidence. The techniques that we show you in this particular style of karate are practical application techniques. We are not going to show you a, or develop a false sense of confidence. Anything we show you are things that will work, will work, okay? Now, a couple more. Help! Hey Ooh, nice. Help! Yes, One more time. Help! Very good. Now, let's say, for an example, she can't get off on the rear leg. The front leg has to work for her. For some strange reason, you've got Velcro underneath your foot or you're standing in flypaper, whatever the case may be. She's going to pump me up now with this forward leg. Forward leg. All right? Just give me one shot there with the forward leg straight up there. Hip. Oos. Hip. Oh, man. I'll tell you. Ready? Hip. Oos. Hip. Bang. Beautiful. One more time. Hip. Oos. One more time. Hip. Very good. Okay. Now. You're looking good today, by the way. That's because you just turned 17, is that it? And you're getting your license, and you're all pumped up, I can tell. Now, let's take some of these techniques here, and let's put them to application. Oh, almost forgot one more, shin kick. One of the most important ones of all, because this thing is real nice. If anybody's ever gotten kicked in the shin, you can, you can I'm sure, vouch for this. If you get hit in the shins, it is excruciating. Now, when I say the shin, I'm talking between the knee and the ankle right here. And when you kick the shin area, you want to try and hit directly in the center of the bone. Directly in the center of the bone. Not down low. If I was just had a little peg here, that would be my weakest point, but I have a big foot down there that supports me. So I want to try and hit dead center right in here. Now, you people at home, if you're sitting down on the couch or somewhere, just take your legs, stick them out a little bit, take your knuckles and wrap your shin bone a little bit, and feel that excitement go right up your leg. Okay. Now, you can imagine a young lady like this, 110 pounds, with that rear leg from point A, which is the point where she starts from, to point B, which has to be a target area, there's time and space here. She wants to create speed and velocity. When she kicks me, she's like, she's got that driving iron down at the golf course there, okay? And she's going to knock this leg right on out there, boom, trying to get a hole in one. Now, I'm no fool, am I, Jen? Not today, anyhow. Okay, I brought my big pad along. And what I want you to do, Jen, is I just want you to kind of throw that shin kick right into there. Ready? Hip! Hey Nice. Now notice when she's making the kick, or doing the kick, excuse me, she's kicking the, the uh, shin here just as though she'd be kicking a soccer ball. She's using the inside ridge of her foot, and when she uses her foot sideways, she's got a lot more striking area there, so she less chance of missing the leg, okay? Hip. Ah. One more time. Hip. Ah. Oh, man, I feel it right on through this thing. Hip. Ah. Ah. Very good. Okay, shake out my leg. <laughs> Very nice. Now, we just showed you some real vulnerable shots there. Uh, with kicks, uh, cuticle rip, and elbow. And we have one more that we want to show you, and this is called a palm strike, palm strike. And the way we utilize our palm is we open it just like so, and we flex our fingers. And the striking surface happens to be right across here. And this is real nice, because from here, Jennifer, if you could just flex your hand and demonstrate with your forward hand, she comes in, she can hit me in the chin, boing, put my head back. She can hit me right underneath my nose. Pow. She could hit me in the solar plex area. Go ahead. And if she was down low, she could go into the groin area. She can go into the side of the thigh as well. All right. Give me a charley horse. She also has fingers. Let me see those fingers. Get them out there like so. She can come into the chin with the, with the uh, palm strike. Take those fingers into my eyes. Rake the eyes. Scratch the face. I'm no fool. I'm getting out of there. I made a big mistake. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry. I thought you were somebody else. My goodness. Where's my glasses? I can't see. All right. So she basically, her whole entire body has to become a weapon. So now what we're going to do is try and put some of these things into application, simulate an attack. All right. Let's say, for example, you're minding your own business, Jennifer. You're looking straight ahead. And uh, some stranger comes up to you, grabs you by the shoulder. What I want you to do is I want you to re-grab my shoulder. After you say, let me go, give me a couple shin kicks in the shin, and then I want you to give me a palm strike into the chin and get the heck out of there. All right, but don't go too far because I need you for the next technique. All right, so she's minding her own business. I come up there. Hey, sweetie pie, how you doing? Let me go, let me go. No way. Ah, ah, ah. Ooh, nice, very good. There goes a the tap dance lesson. <laughs> now, think about this, you people at home. If you've ever stepped on something sharp, an object, a tack, a nail, stone, whatever the case may be, the first reaction is your leg comes up, pain, Woo! 
So she gave me a shot here. All right, simulate. Bang! Whoa! Did that hurt? Right away, my foot comes up in the air because I want to take the pressure off of it. It's a natural reaction. I'm not saying response. Response is better, but it's a reaction. Now, she also hits me in the chin with the palm of her hand. Boom! Knocks me off balance. Pushes me away. Pushes me away now, and I'm totally out of the picture. My leg is all banged up, my chin is off to the side of my head, and I'm down on the ground, and she's getting some assistance. Either that, she's going to buy herself a popsicle after this. I don't know. Now, let's do that again. First thing, remember, let me go, let me go. Let me go, let me go. Breeze right there, thanks. Push her button, and she goes nuts. <laughs> all right. Now, she, let, she said, let me go, let me go. Remember the reasons. The first one is to communicate with me. I don't want you to touch me. If I don't obey her wishes, then I obviously have some bad intentions. And you don't have time to think about it because if she says, let me go, and I don't honor her wishes, then you have every right in the world to defend yourself. So you have to think quick. Now, from here, she reaches up, she grabs me. So I don't take off. Now, she gives me a shin, a shin, <laughs> a shin kick, go ahead. Bang! Give me another one for good luck. <laughs> Pow! Very good. Now my foot feels like El Dante Spaghetti. She comes in with the palm of her hand, hits me in the chin. Ah! Bang! Pushes me out of the way. And that's it. I don't get back until two weeks from now. All right, good. Now, that's from a simple shoulder grip. A simple shoulder grip. Now, there's a lot more elaborate techniques that you can do, but sometimes less is more. Keep it simple and get tight with it. All right? Now, the next technique we're going to work on is going to be an arm grab. An arm grab. Now, say she's facing me, and I come up to her and I say, Hey, baby, what's happening? Let me go, let me go. I ain't letting you go. Next thing she does is her shin kick again. Bang! Ah! Ooh. From here, she does what we call a hitchhiker. She breaks the lock, comes up with the palm. Bang! Gives me a shot with the other hand. Pow! To the throat. This is a nice one. The tongue guaranteed to come out 14 feet after this. This is what we call right here. This is an ox jaw. Open hand technique. And she slides it right up into my throat. And the reason that she does it like so is because there's less space here. If a person happens to have a short neck, she can still slide that hand up into them. She hits me from here, and she's going to finish me off with a groin kick from here. Go! Hey I forgot to tell you, Jen. I'm not wearing my turtle shell now. Easy, will you? Woof. The lights went out. All right. Here we go again. Yo. Very nice. Nice technique. And believe me, it works. Imagine if she was doing the Lincoln Log move on me. Be two of me around here. All right. Here we go now. Okay. I grabbed her. And she, she says to me, Let me go. Let me go. No way. I don't respond at all. She can. She, she, ah! Oh, good. Ah! Woo! Nice move. Okay, this is excellent technique. <laughs> All right, now, this technique can also work from a shoulder grab. Doesn't necessarily have to be here. It could work right from a shoulder grab, and here it's even better because what happens, her hand's already free, her arm is already free. Just simulate the shin kick, if you would. Bang. Now, <clears throat> man, you're ready to go, <laughs> ain't you? All right? The um, shin kicks are good because what it does also, it distracts the attacker or the assailant. If he's preoccupied with talking to you or grabbing you up here, and all of a sudden you kick him in the shin, his mind automatically goes to the pain. She kicks me. He's not going to stand there on that leg thinking about getting kicked again. He might move it back or he might pick it up. At that point, when he moves back, his head stays there. From here, she gives me a shot with the palm. She hits me with the other hand. Bang. I'm standing there, groin unprotected. Yow. <laughs> and that's it. Okay, back again. Now, excuse me. That technique can be worked from any type of a grab from the front. Any type of a grab from the front. I would not use that from front choke because of a front choke, you know, it's just a matter of seconds before someone renders you unconsciously and could possibly kill you. Now, when we get to an arm grab, one of the things you don't want to do is pull away. Pull away. Try pulling away. Because what happens is this fatigues you. If she's a small individual like she is compared to me, she's fatiguing herself. And time is really important, and surprise is very important when it comes to self-defense. All she's doing right now is she's just wasting valuable time. She's panicking. The biggest obstacle in life is yourself, not so much the attacker. So if you can remain calm, your body's going to be able to respond instead of reacting, and that's exactly what we want to do. Now, let's say, for an example, I come up to her and I grab her with my other hand, and let's say, I say, hey, how you doing? I'm squeezing her hand, I'm patting her hand, oh, how's everything going? And she says, let me go, let me go. Oh, come on, you don't want me to go, let you go now, do you? From here, she reaches over, she does that cuticle rip we spoke of. Ooh. 
And I'm telling you, if you don't have nails, that's the only way it will not work. That means if you bite your nails down to your first knuckle, you don't have any way of conveying the message to them. But in her case, her nails slip right up under there, and I mean it is excruciating. You people at home right now, because maybe you may not believe me, but let's take a little test right now. Take one of your hands, pick it up in front of you, look at that cuticle, take the other thumbnail and lay it right underneath, just like so, and slide your nail in there. Don't be afraid. Don't be a wimp. Slide it up. To, oh, very good. That's it. And you can, you know, testify to the fact, we've got a bunch of witnesses now, they know this technique works, that this thing, in fact, does work. And remember, we're being nice about it. Jennifer doesn't know me from Adam. When she does this, what she's going to do is she's going to peel this thing back like a banana and expose that whole part of my thumb and see the tendons, the muscles, and the bone. Ooh, I'm getting hungry. Okay, she reaches up there, scratches it back. Yo! Okay, from here, again, she kicks me. Bang! Very good. Okay, now, again, from here, she's going to scratch me, kick me. Kick me again. Now, I'm right here. I'm a perfect candidate for an elbow. Please, don't hit me. <laughs> all right, she comes around, elbows me. Ah! Bang! My face goes back. She, I'm all the weights on the heels of my feet. She pushes me out of the way. Boom, and she takes off, and she gets some assistance. Now, never take it for granted that even though you may have defended yourself and the individual happens to look helpless or maybe unconscious or immobile, that that person is really hurt because he could be playing possum. You come over and you're a little bit sympathetic about what has just happened. He comes up, he pulls out a weapon, or she pulls out a weapon. It could be the end of the story. Also, what I'd like you to think about is that not all attackers are male. There's a lot of female attackers out there, perpetrators, assailants, whatever you want to call them. The thing is not to get in a panicky situation. All right? Now, turn around, face the other direction. All right, let's say somebody comes up to her. And look at this, I got a beautiful horse's mane back here, and I'm a bully. She's in the park, and maybe she's playing a little ball or something, or maybe she's just looking out. I come up and I grab her hair, I couldn't resist it, I grab her hair. Now the first thing Jennifer doesn't want to do is she doesn't want to pull away, because what's going to happen, I'm going to pull this rascal right out of her head. So what she does is she reaches up with both hands and lays her hands right on top of mine and holds them close to her head. So I can't pull her hair at Oh, I can't pull her hair. So at this point, she's in no real danger, immediate danger. And what happens is she's got one of my arms tied up. Now from here, what she's going to do is she's going to take her right leg, she's going to pick her knee up, and she's going to kick straight back into the shin of my foot. Go ahead, sir. I'm am. Excuse me. Go ahead. Give me a shot. Bang. All right, simulate that with a little more fury. Go. hi -ya! I said fury, not pain. All right, again, pick that up again. Go. hi -ya! Very good. There goes one leg. Now she knows she's got something. She comes back with the other one, kicks me in the other one. Bang. Now I'm trying to get away. And my hand's like, I'm stuck here. I got a problem. From here, what she does is she dips her head, turns around this way, finishes me off with a nice kick into the groin. Go ahead. Ah! Ah! Good. Now, she lets go of her hair, and she takes off. Very nice. And I didn't even mess up your hair. Okay, watch again. Turn around. Again, now, remember, you don't want the person to pull your hair. So we have to think, be logical here. I could reach up here, and I start pulling this thing, or she pulls away, and I'm going to wind up with a big clunk. This would be nice, too, to swat the flies, you know? Okay, I got a big clunk of hair, so what she does is she reaches up with both hands, holds my hand fast to her head, so I can't pull her away. There's no way I can do it. She comes back, she gives me a kick with the sh with, into the shin, go. Bang, the other leg, go. Pow, she wants now. There, oh, she's getting smart. Whoa, now she's got me, and she lets go. And the lower portion of my body is just mashed potatoes, all right? Sushi. Now. We're going to take this one step further, because what she can do is she can also pretty much control me in this situation. She reaches up, and what I want you to do this time is hold on tight, and let's do a double jump kick to the groin area, and I need a wide shot here so you people can appreciate exactly what she's going to do to me. She does a double jump kick up into the groin. Go ahead. Hiya! Very good. And what she's doing, she's taking the heels of her feet, and she's kicking right up into my groin area. Go again. Hiya! Good. Now I'm in real trouble. She kicks back a couple of times to my shins now. Bang, bang. This time, turn the other direction, Jen, so the people at home can see what you're doing. And she lifts her head up, and she's got my arm in a nice lock here. Now, if she wants, she can kick me, or she can just... <laughs> Thanks, Jen. She can just let go immediately and do a couple of punches on She's got my arm locked out nice here, by the way. Okay? If she just walks into me, walk into me, Jen. Whoa! Okay, back there. All right. 
like, why do I have to be so tall? All right, she's got me nice. She's got my arm locked out. She's got a nice arm bar here and wrist lock. Now what she's going to do is she's just going to let go immediately. She's going to let go immediately. She's going to give me double punches into the body. Go. Hip. <laughs> nice. Very good. So the whole concept here in a self-defense situation is to remain calm. Remember, the most important self-defense of all is avoidance. Okay? If you get in a situation, then what you have to do is you've got to talk. Let me go, let me go, let me go. One more time, we've got to get out of here because we ain't got much time. Bus is waiting for us. Yep. Let me go, let me go. Aya, aya. That's about all the time we got. We'll be right back after this message. Ooh, that was nice. Hi, welcome back to another Closing of Karate and You. One of the things I want to mention is that if you're taping the show and you're able to have the, uh, the luxury of taping the show and an opportunity to observe this, you must watch these techniques over and over again so that you can develop what we call muscle memory. And when you're working with a partner, remember that it's real important that you do not inflict any deliberate pain, no intentional pain there. You want to work together as a team. So this way you'll be able to learn better. Jennifer's been on our show, gee, I can't remember how many times. You started when you were knee-high to a grasshopper, Jen. <laughs> and uh, she's going to be 17, and she's real excited. And uh, she also mentioned to me about an exciting part of her in her martial arts career that she just recently uh, experienced with her brother. And what was that? Can you tell everybody at home? My brother just got his black belt. Just got his black belt. Now there's two in the family. Mm -hmm. And uh, Teddy Natoli is his name, by the way. And he did a very, very nice job last, uh, I guess it was two weekends ago. And uh, he's going to be a real uh, asset to our black belt club over at our karate school. Uh, what basically got you started in the martial arts, by the way, Jim? It's a wild and crazy world. A girl needs protection. Ooh, that's an intelligent. That's <laughs> intelligent. I guess you plan on becoming a professional when you get a little older. Yes, sir. Okay, you plan on going to college and all. Yes, sir. Good. Okay. Well, like I always say, it's always a pleasure to have your pretty face on the show. You people at home, whenever I have her, I always get people calling me up, asking me about her and how she started out. And how how did you start out, by the way? What five years? Four years ago? About five years ago. Five yes. years ago, and you've been a first degree black belt for how long now? About almost two years. Almost two years, and I can tell you honestly without any any exaggeration this young lady here could be really a world-class material because she's really got the number one she's got the right attitude she's got the whole entire skill she is what we call a total package all we got to do is see if we can get her into the karate school a little more and give her a little more time um, if you'd like to see Jennifer come on down to the school she'll be happy to introduce you show you take you a couple of rounds all right Jen all right let's do this let's get into a couple of those roundhouse kicks this is master art Bynes, Jennifer Natoli thanking you for inviting us into your home Remember that the biggest obstacle in life is yourself. Overcome it, you will achieve the greatest accomplishment of all. This can only be achieved, however, through a balanced education that pertains to knowledge in the mind, honesty in the heart, and strength in the body. Thank you. Have a happy, healthy, safe week. Say goodbye, Jen. Bye. Bye. Okay. Roundhouse kick there. Hip. Ooh, nice. Hip. Yeah, a little higher if you would. Hip. Ooh, man, I pity the fool.